Welcome to The Fix. Sit down with copywriting experts Nick O'Connor and Glenn Fisher as they review, discuss and improve real-world copy sent in by you. This is The Fix. I mean, there's no... <laughs> that somehow it looks is insane. What? Go for it, go okay. for it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of The Fix. Are you going, are you- I'm like, leaning forward. Leaning forward, I'm leaning right. Forward, yeah. You wouldn't know it, but we've spent at least, <laughs> we spent a long time trying to set this up. This week's episode is being filmed on location uh, about 400 yards away from the venue of FixFest. Uh, we're just in town. Uh, we've been doing all sorts of stuff. We went and had another look at the venue. We've been planning uh, social occasions. We've been planning a pub crawl for the evening of Fix Fest. We're actually staying, or well, I am staying right now as we speak to you now. We're speaking from a hotel route, same hotel we'll be staying in uh, when we come down to London for Fix Fest. So we're basically doing a trial run of everything. However, that has meant quite a lot of argy bargy as, as we try to decide how we film in a hotel room. <laughs> it's so, something about the Cookie Monster story hour. It's just it, a little, it's, it's all a little bit it's like... Sort of, mm, <laughs> it's quite a fun hotel, but it's also, uh, I'm very aware of how silly this looks, but yeah, anyway. Right. We're gonna review some copy in just one second, but one really important piece of information about FixFest before we get started. Uh, one of the things that we're getting sorted out while we're here is what I'm gonna loosely call the swag. Uh, various things we're gonna be giving away as part of FixFest, various free little goodies and things like that. For us to make all of that work, we need to know final numbers. This is really important. So if you haven't got your ticket to FixFest yet, but you want to come, you need to let us know by absolute latest 31st of August. So that's uh, next Thursday. After that, uh, it's going to be problematic because we will have ordered all the swag. We will have sorted everything out. You might not get your cucumber sandwich or whatever it is we're going to serve for lunch. We really need to know final numbers so that we can get everything locked in. So if you're on the fence, if you've been meaning to get your ticket but haven't got it sorted yet, whatever that might, whatever the reason might be, you need to let us know by 31st of August. So you've got about six days give or take, depending on when you're watching this episode. Right. Where do people go, Nick, if they want a ticket? Um, I believe you're about to tell them. <laughs> ah, it's thefixfest.com. If they go to thefixfest, if they, you, go to thefixfest.com, you'll be able to purchase a ticket. If you have any trouble, drop us a line, feedback at thefixcopywriting.com. <laughs> it's a lot of admin. Uh, a lot of admin. We've, we've added, we're, well, I'm trying to make a case for more admin on the day. Nick is holding me back and preventing me from doing that. I want it to be fun. I, I will make sure there's plenty of, like, house price discussions, like council tax, just like filling in forms, we'll, as much as that as we can fit in. Gerrymandering, yeah, whatever that be, might be. Whatever gerrymandering is. Isn't that political thing? Yeah, come on, I'll tell you what yeah. it is afterwards. Right, enough of that. Grab your tickets at FixFest if you want to come. Let us know about 31st of August. Right, let's move on and look at a piece of copy. Glenn. Will you read it aloud and we'll bring it up on I will screen read it to aloud uh, and I will now go back and put it on screen as well. Um, it's a lift note uh, and uh, it is for crypto. Um, so we can maybe get into that in a minute, but I'll just read the uh, copy out so you know where we're at. Uh, subject line is, these special coins could be the next big project or rare coins pay you $6,500 monthly just for owning them. Dear reader, prepare for a groundbreaking event that will rock the crypto market to its core. This is not your average opportunity. It's a game changer you can't afford to miss. In 2017, early investors turned $1,000 to $3,000 profit on Binance. That's 300,000. 300,000. Yeah. It's even better than I imagined. Yeah. Uh, now get ready for something even bigger. According to Reuters, quote, this event could shake up prices. There is a lot at stake, end quote. Billionaires like Elon Musk, Winklevoss twins, in brackets, pioneers of Bitcoin, and Mark Cuban are silently preparing for it. Mark Cuban has invested at least $7 million into crypto because of this event. 
So what is this event and how can you profit from it? That is what Tika Tiwari answers in this shocking video where he reveals that investors will enter a crypto buying frenzy very soon. This time it's not about Bitcoin, Ethereum or any other popular coin. It's a little known subsector of the crypto market. And that's where the next big project is waiting to explode. This buying frenzy won't revolve around ordinary coins. We're talking about special coins that pay you every month just for owning them. Yes, you heard that right. It's like money falling from the sky into your pockets. And the best part? These coins are capable of turning $1,000 into an entire nest egg. For instance, one of these coins paid out $5,000 every month to investors and it returned $40,000 as capital gains within two years with only a $1,000 stake. And another one paid out $9,000 every month and returned over $55,000. And I'm gonna stop there because we've gone on the numbers game. We have. And we've gone too deep and there's loads before that. Um, Nicholas Witchell, Royal Correspondent, what do you think? Oh no. <laughs> He's <laughs> actually gone. <laughs> um, yeah, just the first point I would make, uh, I think we should take Take the copy off screen now, and we'll just we'll just talk about this because there's there's a lot we can discuss there. Just a, it's, this is a follow up point to a previous episode uh, of the fix. Very recent, it was either the one we did with Joshua Lee Henry or Dave Bauman. I can't quite remember, but we talked about overuse of numbers, um, which just sounds slight like a slightly weird point to make if you haven't actually heard those episodes. But the two points, just to quickly recap them, was one. Nobody has an emotional connection to a number. So, you know, you, you don't actually strengthen your copy by adding more and more and more numbers in, no matter how big they are. And you've got to be really selective. And the second thing is, you know, I'm going to be mean to you now, but maybe you heard it in Glenn's reading of that copy. You know, Glenn is, as, you know, maybe he's a little bit on the young side for financial marketing prospect. Generally, they're a little bit older. But, you know, he had a slightly doddery old man quality to him as he struggled through those numbers. And I'm I, I actually not being mean to you that as you try and work through all I'm actually numbers, 65. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on his third <laughs> midlife crisis. Um, you, you could see the stodginess of the numbers as he tried to sort of chew his way through them. And, OK, not everybody reads email copy aloud. You know, unless they're reading it to their spouse or something, which would be a slightly <laughs> odd uh, environment to find yourself in. Just mentally, you sort of have to chew through those numbers, and you lose your you lose your way because I, it, you, you're not really anchored to anything, and they're I all so you, big. I thought you were going to be mean to me because um, I thought you were actually going to be mean to me, which would have been valid because I used to do um, headline complexes with quite a lot of numbers in. That was my, one of my uh, things that I went through in the kind of bizoppy gambling uh, headline um, world. You, it is a very profit, and this is what people might be thinking, it's worth probably labouring the point slightly, because it's slightly counterintuitive, especially in the financial world, where um, you might be thinking, well, Nick and Glenn, it's profits, that's a good thing. People making profits, Showing people the money. making money. It sounds like a good thing. And I used to do headlines where I'd have three profit numbers. A 562, a 642, and a 361 kind of thing. That was, even then, it was a mouthful to say. What I did to try and do it was almost make the numbers like scannable so it wasn't, so you were kind of skipping. I was actually, even then, consciously thinking, I just want these to be a visual thing that you don't read out. But I was already aware of that objection. Yes, we're slightly older and a bit longer in the tooth in the copywriting world, so we've kind of got that luxury that we can take time and lean on stuff and make a case for not having as uh, big a profit tick as, uh, as, as a focus. But really, e even so, fundamentally, when you talk about emotions, I think that really provides the, um, the, the real proof for why. Because you don't, those numbers are silly. And, and anything more than a three, anything more than three numbers, like a quick this, 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 or this. Yeah. Anything more than that. When, you, when you've got three, four lines, five lines, with a comparison number where you've got um, a thousand pounds into two thousand pounds, but then that's with, from a thousand pounds, it's just too many. It's too many. So it's, it's, it's made more difficult, Glenn, you probably don't know this actually, but lots of the rules and regulations, uh, some of which are internal, so they're specific to businesses, but lots of them have been applied everywhere. Now, 
state that you need starting stakes, time frames, exactly. and end goals. So actually, to, to, to give one example, you have to give them three numbers, which is a, not to say don't use them, but think carefully about... It means you've got one chance. Yeah. It means really, I, 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 just as I kind of stopped writing financial copy as, as my main thing, it was just coming in that that was the case. And it was just, it, I can remember our compliance officer at the time going, you've got one hit. Like you can have one big bold money claim and that's it. So you have to save that up and know to hit that. You can't afford to do that, especially in an email piece. But that all aside, it just doesn't read one. No, and it's, read and it's yeah. just remember that your, your audience may well be, they may not be that au fait with large numbers. You know, they're interested in money. That doesn't necessarily mean they're interested in numbers. So just putting all that stuff in there is just chewy. It's kind of have to work through it. We don't really want that. Okay, that's a, that's, a, that's where we stopped the copy because Glenn got tired of saying the numbers out. Let's just pull back a little bit and think yep. about the copy as a whole. Um, there was lots to like about that. Yeah, yeah. There was, I would say there was actually two lift notes going on there. There was one that was a hard, by hard, I mean based in fact, based in... You know, there's this event, there are these people that are preparing for it. Uh, whenever they were, I can't remember who they were now, Mark Cuban, the Winklevoss twins, and whoever the third one was. Uh, they were investing real money, uh, Elon Musk. Mm. So there was a kind of hard, factual idea there about something's happening and, and, and powerful people are preparing for it and you can prepare too. That was one side of it. The other side, there was quite a lot of copy speak that I would just cross out. So I, the line that I remember was... Uh, like money falling out of the sky into your pockets. And there was a few other examples. All that does actually is undermine the strong copy that's in there, which yep. is based in fact. You want maybe one claim, one one edge towards making a promise to your to your reader. You don't want to say this. Like, you know, if somebody said to you in a pub, honestly, mate, it'll be like money falling out of the sky into your pockets, you'd think, just leave me alone. Stop trying to, I don't want to buy it. Just leave me alone. You know, things like that undermine your, your, your copy. They're, they're not, they're just not the way people would speak. And people can smell that a mile off. So I'd stick, I would have just got my red pen out and cut about four or five lines in there that was kind of a bit too copy. Yeah. And just boiled it down to what we had, what, you know, the core argument, which I thought was strong. The prob so, so that's an easy thing, right? Okay, all I've got to do is get the pen out and cross out the list I don't like, and that I'm left with the stuff I do, so I think that's yep. good. What I'd want to work on was what was the idea here? There was two kind of ideas competing. There's this event. Yeah. I'd like a bit more detail. I'd like you to lift the veil a little bit more about what this event is. What it was, I think it was called, like, the big project. Well, no, that was the play. That's that was how play. you could capture right, okay. and 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 as yeah, could could make slightly, you yeah. money uh, from home, whatever. Those two things compete with each other because it's yeah. like, what is it? Is it this event that's going to make certain cryptos go up, or is it this specific crypto that I should own? I know that they're connected, but you need to be clear in your own mind. What is? It's it's a power of one. Yeah. What is my big idea here? Yeah. I think they're both quite strong ideas. So I think if you're the writer of this piece of copy, as we often say with email copy, you've got two good ideas, so you've got two lift notes. You've probably got six, because you can do three variations of each idea or whatever you want to think about. Blending those two things together doesn't make them stronger, it makes them weaker. Yeah. Another point that I just want to get across in this, because it's we don't talk about it in other... I don't think we've kind of covered this a bit, but it, the Vin, Vinkle, Vinkle Voss, uh, Winkle Voss, I don't know how you say it, it's the... Face, is it the Facebook? Others who keep guessing? Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it yeah, was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, the bit, you've got a bit in there where it says, in brackets, pioneers of Bitcoin. What you're doing there is saying, you probably won't know that these people are in a part of this world. That, to me, is a big no-no. That is a it's, a, it's a serious mark against you on the driving lesson analogy where I say, if you get three like fouls, you're out kind of thing. If you're, if it's not blatantly obvious, I know that, Musk is involved in bitcoins. I, I fair play that I'll probably assume that Mark Cuban is. The Vinkle Boss, Boss, but uh, the Vic Vinkle Bros. It's a new band. Uh, I'm launching it with you, Nick. You don't know it yet. Yeah. You just need a bass player. Um, but he's in, he's, he's in, 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 in Nicholas Winchell. Nicholas Winchell. <laughs> Get here. Stop. 
Bloody 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 this is getting very English. Yeah, anyway. No one will know who he is except yeah. English people. Um, don't go and research it. But no, if you if you have to explain in a brackets like that, it's no good. You need to change that that around. Even if if then if it's not obvious that they're well into Bitcoin, if they're you just you're explaining a thing that you're already explaining. Remember, a lift note piece of copy is you explaining to someone. It's why I have a problem with the phrase "let me explain" because you're saying, "Well, that's what I am doing." So why would you waste copy saying "let me explain"? If you're having to explain something you're already explaining, you you just already yeah. in a complicated world. So I would take that away. Can you replace them with someone else? Or if you can't commit to the fact that that will be obvious, they they shouldn't be in there for that reason. So just be aware of that because you do see that. I've seen that on a few. Lift notes fit to it. It's just like, oh, here's why I've put these in, kind of thing. You don't want any of that kind of. It, it needs to be obvious. It goes back to your idea of like pointing at things. If it's not obvious that, think about it. If I don't go, yeah. oh yeah, they're massively into Bitcoin. I don't. If I don't know it, it's not worth. You can't just point. Yeah, that's true. Thing. So I think those are. We're, we're largely talking about cleaning the copy up. I think um, if we we can go. So we've kind of started at the the micro level and worked our way up rather than yeah. the other way round which is as valid a way of review copy as any other, but um, I would have some reservations potentially about whether this is contextualized enough. This So this is there's this event that's going to, I don't know, be a game changer for Bitcoin. I'm not quite clear what this event is. And I think we need to dial it in to what's been going on in the cryptocurrency world. Now, we're coming out of a cryptocurrency bear market. There's been... It, things are starting to change, and this year cryptocurrencies have, they are up. They were down a lot last year. So we're not right at the start. You know, we're not in a bear market where you've got to address it directly. But I do think you need... I think that I'd, I'd still, I'd say I'm probably in mass crypto buyer market space, and I'd still be like, oh, it's not time yet. Like, yes. I, I need some more stuff I need talking to explain why that is but perhaps that actually world. that's the answer to making the event feel more specific yeah so it's, it's like what is this event thing. it's the moment yeah. that it's cryptocurrencies that, yeah. reawaken and it's going to be driven not by people like me and you buying but by billionaires buying or whatever that's what I mean about lifting the veil about you know if you've if you've got a good idea like, but there's this event it's going to change the crypto markets these guys were already invested their money ahead of it I'm going to show you what you can invest in to, to profit as prices rise or whatever. You know, that's a cool idea. There's there's never going to be any harm, I don't think, in just adding a couple of lines of extra detail. Not giving too much away, but just maybe being a bit more descriptive, laying out the stakes a mm -hmm. little bit more. So actually, we could we could tick two boxes there. We could address the context and say, while most people still think mistakenly mm -hmm. that they should be staying out of the cryptocurrency market, insiders preparing for this event people like mark cuban winklevoss twins whatever yeah they're already up in their stakes they're already you buying can, you can be cute with moments like that when you're adding context and um it, it's wine hour yeah but it's, it's you're adding the uh, exposition to yeah. the certain thing yeah. which we're kind of told to get rid of generally in copy it's like get rid of that stuff get straight to the story go like aristotle in the middle kind of thing but when you do have to... Sorry, let's just slow you down a second. When you say Aristotle in the middle... He basically invented the idea that you start in the middle of the play and then go back to the beginning. And him. So when you say it's Tarantino, is it nonsense? It's Aristotle who invented the form of graphic. It's good. Uh, it's good stuff. Play. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Anyway, um, but that generally we would say start in the middle, like get to it. But when you have to do a bit of exhibition, usually because of that, you need to put in, if there's a, particularly in the finance from Marcus, if there's a something, if house prices, that you're going to have to mention them. But you get to be a little bit clever, and I'm going to use another pretentious thing, but like the Kafka, what I learned from Kafka, was that you say these things to, and you say, as some people will know. Like, if some people will know, and then if you don't know, you feel more intelligent for knowing. So you're like, all oh, right, okay, I didn't know that, but he's assuming that, or that, that writer is assuming that I do know. He's, he's allowing me to know when I didn't know. If that makes sense, I'm not sure. Well, one way I think that's thinking, a very powerful thing. It, it is, and one way of thinking about exposition, I suppose, in this sense is you're thinking about where your prospect is mentally. So that this copy is strong around facts and figures and and the kind of outlines of the ideas I've, I've already laid out for you. The event, the insiders yeah. buying, whatever. What the exposition can actually do is address where our reader is emotionally, what they're expecting, what they're thinking, what they might have heard, 
So you have to make a guess here about whether they're pro crypto, anti crypto, whether they're feeling, you know, a little bit on the fence about it. The fact that cryptocurrency markets aren't exactly going crazy, they're up, but they're not up strongly, allows us to say probably people are still a little bit reserved. Yeah. So that actually allows you to say, you might have heard this, you might be expecting this. Yeah. Some people have claimed X. So you can just have something in there that just addresses, well, one great way of cutting through it with a piece of copy is to try and confound people's expectations. The reason it's so strong is because you have to try and figure out what those expectations are to begin with. But if you can nail it, you really talk to your reader because you talk about what they're expecting and what's known, but you introduce something that's unknown and spectacular and, and, and energetic around it. And that works really, really well in the financial markets because uh, that people are being, they're consuming financial media all the time. So if we can kind of get a twist on that, we can, we can kind of break into their consciousness in a different way. But to, yeah, to do it, you have to think, where might my prospect be in their own mind? That's not something I see in this copy. No. It's not a problem. I see loads of strong stuff, but I'm thinking, how do we sort of twist that a little bit and plug it into something so that the reader goes, yeah, oh, right, okay. I'd, I've been told X, so uh, this is a more useful point generally, which is if you're maybe in a more saturated market, uh, and by that I mean, let's say an idea is being shared widely by your competitors. So let's say cryptocurrencies, okay? Now, there are times in the financial markets where it's all you hear about, crypto, 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 crypto. If if you take that approach and say, how can I confound people's expectations? What are they expecting? What are they hearing? And how can I surprise them on that level? You're automatically pushing your copy out into a space that's different to what's already out there. Mm -hmm. So it can, uh, you see it happening all the time. I'm just starting work on something that may end up being about um, digital currencies. It could be about cryptocurrencies. It could be about um, central bank digital currencies and authorita authoritarian control. But where I've actually started the project is thinking, well, what are people already being told, mostly in other financial promotions and other products? What are they hearing now? What are they, and therefore what are they expecting? What are they being fed? What information is front of mind? Okay. How can I work with that information and put a spin on it so that I get all the benefit of the fact that it's front of mind with all the benefit of being new and fresh and different? So to do that, you've got to start by thinking what's going on up here for the reader. If we bring a bit of that to play in this lift note, and perhaps we're over engineering the lift note, but I think the copy lesson stands on. Yeah, yeah totally. It's, it's, it's like, I'm going to sum it up because I'm aware that the camera might turn off in any moment. Um, but it's, the the idea the cliche is to seek one other zag but what you're really talking about is zigging but getting all the benefits of the zag as well yes and that's yeah that's something right. a little bit different really that's getting what everybody's seeing but then you're being different as well so you're getting the best of both worlds yeah you're able to say you might have heard this yeah. and that and this but the you know what i mean you, yeah. you 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 can set up that formulation and again it's a great way mentally of setting yourself up to write because it forces you to think about what the reader may be thinking and may be hearing and that's the piece yes. that's maybe missing here that's the piece that if you do that work put yourself in the reader's mind put yourself in the position of thinking what are they expecting you're forcing your idea sort of into their mind you're forcing yourself to walk in their shoes and that tends to kind of take copy from a six or seven out of ten up to a nine or ten out of ten yeah. i think that's probably a good point to wrap yeah. up yeah let's, um, uh, i mean if we were better produced we would have had like zig and zag coming up but that's another english reference but yeah, that is worth searching for zig and zag i don't even know what zig you know is. oh my god from the big breakfast it was a children all oh, that yes two characters i was never allowed to watch the big breakfast to, to um, underground, to uh, alternative. I think my mum just didn't like the so idea of them presenting. She liked from a... Nicholas Witchell on BBC. Yeah. You need to be on Channel 4 anyway. That's enough nonsense. Enough. This has been a very English episode. Well, we're in a very English hotel. We it's, are. Uh, it's Filmed English. from, uh, from what? Yeah. 400 yards from, what's the name of the venue for Fix Fest? Crypt, Crypt on, on the Green. Crypt on the Green, St. James's Crypt Church in green. Farringdon. Get your tickets, if you can, before the 31st of August. Uh, and if you've already got your tickets, then we look forward to seeing you in, well, just about a month's time at Big Fest, which is on uh, 14th of September, Thursday. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this episode of The Fix, and we will see you again next time. Goodbye.
If you enjoy The Fix and want to get access to even more good stuff, join The Fix Accelerator today. Get access to special masterclasses from Nick and me, watch expert interviews with industry legends, join live copy feedback sessions every week, and get connected to our very own private copy network. Visit thefixaccelerator.com for more information.